so uh, first things first, uh, since we didn't do this last time, um, well, first actual thing is first. Uh, we're just going to scoot you guys back to Orvis. Um, I assume that's where you all want to go. Yeah. At the very least. It's it's the closest one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got a report back in. And yeah. I've got supplies to pick up. Ooh, do you have a cover map while you load the other map? Oh no, this is this is new. This is uh this is I was where you say, are. That's where you are. Nifty. Here we can we can uh toss you guys on. I like it. Yeah, that's cool. I like the big furnace there poofing out smoke rings. So, uh, bookkeeping stuff from last time. Uh, what, when you get back uh, at some point in the week, um, after, after the redshift starts, obviously that does happen. Oh, uh, important to know, actually, because we didn't talk about it last time either. Uh, the redshift starts shortly after you guys get out of that tree. Um, and uh, you would probably take note of the fact that the first wave only happens once. Hmm. Interesting. That double uh, first wave was uh, the previous a time event. you guys yeah. were in the flower scene. Yep. And it related to that time skip, probably. Um. But uh, things, what version things... of the first wave was it? Was it the one that we had been getting, or was it the new one? Uh, the first wave that you have been receiving since, uh, well, since the Thesbridge one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Since since originally arriving at Orvis, there was a um sort of uh a, a, a negative undercurrent to the the psychic energy. Uh, since witnessing the Thesbridge event, um. You did hear a a certain melody, um, yeah, kind of in your run through your head as as this thing hit you. Uh, that hasn't changed. I've been actually really focused on trying to remember how that song goes. It's not too hard. Uh, it's 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 short, and you could probably replicate it at this point. If Amber Green has been trying, he's had a few months at this point to kind of yeah. put it together. He's been uh, working on that. It wouldn't be hard for him to to properly replicate it, and he's he's probably got it down pretty well right now. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe he's at the point where like he's not sure how much of it necessarily is his own invention and how much is the original, but you know the core is all there. Uh, yeah. So I'll probably play that every now and then, just just kind of while we're traveling. Uh huh. Um. So. Uh, Everyone in the party from last time uh, will, once you get back, uh, you'll get 30 marks each, so you can note those down. Uh, you're also going to get 2,000 experience points. Uh, nice. So I'll, I'll throw those on Alvis Tavers and Aranesa's sheet right now. Um, 2,000, you say? 2,000. My lord, I love it. Well, all right. Congrats. Yeah, I did not. All right. How do you level this one again? Uh, you hit the edit button, and then you take the drop down next to your class name and change it from a five to a six. Ah, uh, right. Yep, I remember. Uh, Thank you, sir. You are, you're going to want to roll your hit points, and then uh, what, what does a paladin get at sixth level? Let's see. Scrats on thing. I I'm think close. the rest of you guys are pretty close too, right? Yeah, yeah. I think two thousand from. You have a long rest, Herb. Uh, yes, you can. You can all slam the long rest button. Uh, make sure you just go once. Plus seven's not bad. So you get your aura of protection. And ranger section. Paladin section. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so the whole party is basically immune to saving throws now. That's neat. <laughs> oh, right on. Uh, and that looks like it.
Yep. I think that is it. Saving throw equal to your charisma modifier. Yeah, that's nuts. <laughs> you must be conscious. Um, so uh, you can put this on your token if you like. Um, you can actually set it up as an aura with 10 feet. Uh, oh, really? So cool. You, yeah. Did, did I not put Mont Lauren on here? Did I miss him? There we go. Um, so if... I, I think you can do this, uh, and it might be good for you to uh, do this yourself so that I don't. Uh, you can control it. Uh, if wow. you um, double click on your token, it should edit, open up the edit token page, and you should be able to put in a, a ten foot number for aura one, and then that should just show up on your token whenever you use it. That's handy. Yeah, and you can you can have it visible or invisible um, whenever you like. Uh, Obviously, it's it's always up, and I don't I don't think it's like at will for you. So, um, so that is a thing. Uh, let me make sure I can give Alba Staver his marks. I hope. Where does he put his money? Indeed. Oh, cool! It worked. Yeah, nice. So once we're on an actual map, that'll uh, that'll come out to the ten feet properly. Um. Okay, I guess just put him in here. Maybe get him to figure out, and we'll give him. A, uh, so he's <laughs> uh, Albus Tabri's two hundred and fifty experience points away from leveling up. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so we did uh, both of those. I just want to check and see if there's anything else that I needed to update you guys on uh, immediately upon your arrival here. Um, but yeah, no, that that looks good. Uh, oh, awesome! The texture or protection or something. The text. Yeah, the the tokens for charisma mod uh, don't translate. So it says uh, you get a bonus to saving throw equal to bracket bracket at uh, curly charisma underscore. Mod brace bracket bracket. Does that what well, if you if you click that and put it in chat? Does it not? Uh, it doesn't come out properly. That's cool. Oh, it does work. Wait, no, wait. That does, is that right? No, that says rolling two equals two. That's wrong. Uh, that is my current charisma mod, though. Is it really? Uh, yeah. You only have like fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's got he's got straight twos. Oh yeah, my die rolls were terrible. Oh no. Uh, fourteen is my highest stat. Oh no. That's true. Straight twos. I, uh, I think I told you guys about this once, but I did ha I did help a player roll a character once who did actually rolled straight twelves, uh, including uh, racial modifiers. Nice. So he You're like you are bog <laughs> standard. Full plus ones. Um. Welcome to Hero. -dom. Right, you get to be Peter Parker only without any of the spider powers. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, it takes you guys uh, like a uh, couple days to get back to Orbis. Um, and uh, it is um, current date end of uh, Giannis uh, first month of the year, uh, you guys have pretty much just gone through a massive blizzard that has had some, uh, uh not, not terribly ill effects, uh, on, on the commission, um, but has kind of slowed things down a little bit, kind of forced you to, uh, to trudge through deep snow, uh, all week. Um, but I mean, you guys have, you guys have been roughing it for two years now, so, uh, no, nobody's nobody's that worse for wear. I mean, um, at this point, I just have like a wave of boiling hot water in front of us. If there's any deep snow, and it's just like, all right, <laughs> we have a yeah. we have our little like Japan style uh, ice tunnel that we're just walking through. You've seen how they do the um uh the clear the freeways in Japan. How it's actually like the yeah. the. The sheer walls, like we see in Mario Kart, is like, oh, 
that's how they actually do it. That's totally cool. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's basically um, what we're walking through. Yeah, so uh, you are able to get back to Orbis quite easily, uh, cross through the East City, and uh, make it up to the, the dais where the actual uh, commission base is. Um, and uh, yeah, over over the past few months, uh, things have getting been getting built up. Um, I mean, the, the at this point, uh, pretty much all of the old buildings have been either uh, refurbished enough to use well enough, or uh, like halfway torn down and built up almost from scratch. Um, stuff's been implemented to uh, support the commission, uh, turn them into barracks and storehouses and infirmaries and whatnot. Um, and, uh, there's even been work on, like, a lower level platform, uh, down below the dais, uh, uh, where, uh, plans are continuing for, uh, um, uh, like, boating, uh, resources and stuff like that, so people can go down the river, uh, with the intent of hopefully eventually, uh, reaching the bay, if possible. Um, second aura, what's that second aura? It's my protection ring. Aha. Uh, so, um, when you get back, um, the uh, first thing you all notice is that there are a decent number of new faces here. Um, now, you all were informed uh, last time that uh, a new batch of reinforcements were on their way. Um, about, about 75 people total uh, hired on from uh, the Empire and various places around, um, brought over into the Redshift Zone and used to fill up the ranks, especially in the newer areas you guys have been exploring and, and expanding out to. Um, despite all the challenges so far, uh, the Commission's foothold in the Redshift Zone seems uh, very solid. And um, even, even now, uh, the, uh, the obelisk at... Um, the Oceanside Fort that you guys cleared a while back uh, should be getting done. Uh, as far as you were told, it should have been done uh, before this latest spreadsheet even started. Um, uh, but basically, as soon as you guys cross the bridge onto the threshold, um, a, uh, a, a woman uh, who you don't recognize uh spots you and uh almost trips over herself um to uh come and greet you on your way in and um she is a uh she is a moon elf uh wear dressed in tall boots under a short skirt with a high necked coat uh and a cape uh clutching a spell book to her chest and uh wearing uh the silvery blonde uh classic moon elf hair cut off at her shoulders gigantic round glasses uh propped up on her ears. And uh, when she arrives uh, face first into your party uh, and stops uh, moments before crashing into you, um, she says, uh, Hi, everyone. Raging Crescent checking in. Uh, I'm Lou Fael. You can call me Lulu if you like. I'm really looking forward to helping out. I've read up on all the reports you guys have made on my trip here. Uh, and she runs her finger across all uh, six of you. 
and eventually landing on Nimbus and says, you're Stormcaller, right? And the rest of you, I, I know uh, all of you from the uh, reports. Hi. Oh, welcome. Greetings. Uh, I just came in with the with the new uh, re reinforcements. Um, uh, we all got here uh, a, a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're we got sent out to the front lines. Uh, I, I mean, it's my first time in a redshift, so uh, this is uh, this is new. I guess we're stuck here for uh, what, like uh, uh, five days more? Yeah, yeah, usually about a week or so. Oh, okay. Well, it's enough time to get around and meet everyone. Yeah, it's a good opportunity to to familiarize yourself with our operations. Welcome. Wait, Raging Crescent. You're from uh, you're from back home, aren't you? Yes, I am. They sent me uh specifically uh to help out here uh on on uh. She kind of uh, lowers her voice uh, on on this plane uh, to um, get, you know to help out on the on the front line, uh, get involved, take take notes, see what I can do. Um, I mean, uh, I I, ha I haven't seen too much of what's going on yet. I haven't actually gotten a, a mission yet, but um, I'm. Uh, Wow, it's it's super cool, all all the stuff that you guys have done so far. Um, would you like to hear a song about it? Uh, she uh <laughs> contains her jump for joy uh, inside <laughs> herself and uh, says, "Yes." All right, all right. Well, when there's a good time to tonight, sometime when there's a good time, I'll play. I'll play the song I've written about about our great adventures. Perfect. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't know you guys even had bards. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. I'm I'm gonna one of these days. It's gonna be a hit. Got a bit of everything <laughs> out here, honestly. It's a uh, quite a varied group, and uh, I'm sure you'll find as you uh, as you meet the folks that. There's uh, quite a lot of interesting experiences among us. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you're going to meet one of our most interesting members for uh, just a little bit as our uh, resident beholder officer, um, Captain... Well, I'm sure you've read about Captain Van Arnold. Oh, Van Arnold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I heard he was here. I was wondering when I was going to see him. Um, but uh, uh, Brigadier Demira... Uh, told me that he's uh working on a different front right now so uh yep and well I, i'll be here for as long as i need to be so hopefully i'll get the chance oh definitely what's your uh what's your area of expertise what's your speciality ah i uh am uh a spellcaster i'm i'm a wizard nice we can always use extra magic At your service, uh, well, at the at the commission service, obviously. But if you if you need if you need me to help you with anything, I'm I'm always I'm always here. Um, Likewise, fantastic. Well, um, you know there is something that I've been kind of working on as a project to try to help improve the uh, facilities here, and that's been. Uh, focusing on making scrolls uh, during the downtime. It's kind of a fun sort of task, actually, because there's, well, as you know, you know some of the variation and intricacy and even how one records the same spell. You know, a little, little bit of this and a little bit of that can embellish in different ways. It's kind of fun. But more importantly, we... Uh, We've been able to get a lot of work done with that and uh, raise a lot of funds. So if that's something you'd like to participate in, I'd be more than happy to uh, help fund your efforts. And we'll uh, we'll go over the business details of it later. It's the same same deal for everyone, basically. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you uh, if you need to. Uh, get help with anything magic related 
We uh, we have plenty of folks here. Obviously, I can help you out with things. Um, Dex is usually around. He can help out with a lot of stuff. He's a very, very knowledgeable wizard himself. Speaking of, uh, around this time, uh, Dex does uh, pop up and find his way over to you guys and um, make, make himself known. Uh, and he says, indeed, uh, I'm back, finally back at Orvis. Uh, welcome home, everyone. Oh, welcome back. How did, uh, how did things go with the fort over there? All set. Uh, everything is, is finally built up. Uh, Obelisk is perfectly safe. Uh, we decided to call it Hustom. Um, I like that. We've got, we've got a couple people over there. Uh, and, uh, they're, uh, well, the place is cleaned up and, uh, safe for living in now, for now anyway. Um, it seems like we could probably support maybe 30 people living there at once, uh, before building anything, uh, extra. Um, uh, Nami decided to stay over there and, uh, continue working on the, the, uh, preparations for building some, uh, boating systems, uh, for us. So, uh, I expect you all will have a, uh, a good reason to add back over there in a couple more weeks. So they said. Fantastic. Well, as, uh. As things are going with the uh, the current project, we've got uh, one more uh, one more thing to fetch, and then uh, figure out how this whole magic goes together. Ah, uh, yes, that's the um, the the key thing I've yeah. been hearing about. That's right. We got the second one. We uh, haven't even taken the time to really check it out yet, but uh, considering how intriguing the first one was. But no, no doubt it has some magic power of its own. That'll be for well, the first uh, one did. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they all do. But uh, that'll be for when there's you know office time. Now there's a bunch of new faces to meet. It's time to meet everybody. Celebrate a little. I think I'll uh, make a fancy fountain. Agreed. Well, don't flood the place. Oh, no, no. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's all self-contained. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you, guys, you guys are welcomed back, and you can um, enjoy your downtime uh, however you like. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that. But a couple of things that do come up throughout the week um in terms of uh info and updates um continuing to talk to dex he does have a little bit more info for you um he tells you oh by the way um while i was uh working on the obelisk i i took some time to uh Take a closer look at that spire in the ocean uh, through uh, through through a spyglass, and um, it's obviously inconclusive. Um, but uh, to my eye, it looks like that thing may be made of ice. Uh, hard hard to tell precisely how tall it is, but I, I'd wager uh, well over ten stories, um, and. Uh, I did spot uh, something like uh, clouds or uh, steam or something uh, swirling around uh, the outside of it. Um, I would say it looks like there's some active magical event occurring over there. Hmm. Interesting. It'll be hard to tell anything more than that without getting closer, but uh, we'll we'll have to be pretty careful. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't seem like a active threat, but we can never be too sure with these things. Well, we've been able to survive around it for this long with no problem. I'm hoping we're able to do everything we can with the vault and the uh, 
keys themselves aren't expended in the process, so we can use that uh, scepter to help us either get there or perhaps be protected in that area. Is there a spherical component to either of the keys that we have retrieved so far? Spherical? Uh, yes, the uh, head of the scepter uh, that you got first is uh, a, a spherical uh, sapphire color jewel. Um, and uh, the, um, although much smaller, the uh, pommel of the dagger uh, ends with a similar uh, blue sphere. Cool. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got another 20 minutes till hopefully our great rogue gets here. Um, so why don't we cover uh, downtime activities for now? You guys have, uh, let me see. Um, we'll call it seven days of downtime. What would you like to do? I'm going to first uh, investigate that dagger for its properties, do the full uh, detect magic, identify long rest trio to figure out all the properties. Sure. Um, so uh, that dagger is uh, it is a magical dagger uh, that has the property where upon hitting a target with a melee attack using the dagger uh, the wielder can force the, uh, the wielder can force the target to make a uh, saving throw or take uh a bunch of necrotic damage as it saps and sucks the moisture from their body. Uh, you can use that um, once before it has to recharge on a long rest, similar to the, uh, the scepter. Hmm. Uh, and stat-wise, uh, that's a, a 15 con saving throw, and the damage is 3d6 necrotic. Oof. <laughs> Um, not a plus one though. Just a flat. Dagger it does otherwise. not. It does not confer any inher inherent damage or attack benefits. Okay. Okie dokie. Cool, cool. Um, I'm inclined to have that kept under safety by the uh commission with uh uh Lucent just to. Minimize the risk in case you know total party wipe does occur. Yeah, I, I, uh, I should, yeah. I feel like we shouldn't take it with us. What What did you say, Nia? I agree that it should be kept under lock and key. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, assuming assuming all here are happy with it, um, uh, the brigadier is happy to to take it under her wing, and I'll, I'll distract Alvis. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh and and once again she'll say uh just like last time like hey uh if if you ever uh want to use this uh let me know and uh and we'll we'll hand it over um but uh we'll we'll keep it safe in Orvis for now. Um we can uh we can keep these things locked up in the storeroom or in Dex's lab uh and uh They'll be, they'll be nice and secure there. Sounds good. Alright, so that's one task. Another thing that I wanted to do is check in on the, um, the water cannon. Uh, indeed. So, uh, Smithy has um, a prototype ready for you. Um, basically, he all he needs is for you to sit down for a day with him and calibrate it. Um, but essentially, uh, so uh, assuming you elect to do this with him at oh, some point, definitely that would be 
As soon as as soon as I'm all done with the dagger, it's like, all right, let's figure out that water cannon. Also, he's gonna love these wind up cannon bits, monkey cannon bits, and <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah hilarious yeah, story. Well. You might even feel um, like restoring it or something. So, um, he sits you down and he pulls out this uh, uh, kind of gauntlet wrist guard shaped thing, um, and he says, "All right, so uh, two two specifications." Uh, we'll, we're going to have to work out the, the strapping mechanism. Obviously, it's got to be calibrated for your, for your arm. Um, but basically, uh, the way this is going to work is uh, you've got this. You can um, wear it. Uh, you can do your, you know, do your wizard thing and and uh, generate some water. Uh, it's uh, sealed water tight around the front. Uh, so if you lo- load a, um, he shows you a, uh, example of what he's got, which is, it's basically just a, a metal sphere, um, nice. that can kind of go in the front. Uh, so he says round bolt, uh, you know, anything of a similar size will do, uh, desperate measures. You could probably use a rock, um, and, uh. It'll it'll load into place as long as you're holding it at a at a safe angle, and um, give give it a second. Uh, build up the water pressure, pull the lever, and the pressure will release and launch the object. Um, so uh, it'll take him uh, uh, again about a about a day or maybe half a day, just sitting down with you, kind of uh, making small tweaks to it, making sure it works, making sure it fits properly, um, is and easy so. enough to like take on and off. Um, and uh, you've already paid for it, uh, so he's all set. Um, and once it's done, um, basically what that's going to get for you is uh, a wearable wrist-mounted uh, light crossbow. Uh, with, because of the type of ammunition being used, the bludgeoning property. Okay. Huh. Cool. So then the other question, if I'm not using it with a loaded projectile, is it going to increase the pressure and range of the normal water blast? Uh, pretty much no. Uh, it... Uh, in order to launch a projectile, it has a um, it has a vessel that will help it build the pressure with the with the lever action. Um, but if you if you try to do it without a projectile, it pretty much won't be watertight at that point. Um, so you might be able to you might be able to get like a little extra distance on your geyser. Um, just by like narrowing the the hole a little bit, um, but outside of that, it's it's not going to get you a noticeable upgrade. Oh, okay, uh, that's fine. Cool. So, so yeah, uh, if you want to add that to like your weapon list, uh, yeah. then uh, that's totally fine. Um, uh, I guess it would be a light crossbow that I'm proficient in. Uh, I believe wizards are proficient in light crossbows. Uh, yeah, they are. I am. Okay. I did check. Okie dokie. So I will add that. Um, Alright. Well, that's interesting. And then, of course, um, I guess the other question would be... Um, what's the biggest sort of thing? Like, could I load a, a, a bigger metal spike or something like that into the front. You might be able to uh, get some kind of spike to go with um, it, like if you, if you really wanted to like go for piercing damage, you could probably kind of get something shaped like a spike in there. Um, if you had some kind of like magical ammunition, uh, you might be able to load that in. Um, uh, obviously, he says... Uh, he just kind of gestures wildly in the direction of outside. Uh, could always load a snowball into it. <laughs> um, 
Or you, a hot can, coal. You, you can generate snowballs, right? I can I can make things better. I see. Ice, ice. Yeah. ice bullets. Yeah. Uh, he he said he says or a hot coal. Uh, that that works too. Uh, it's durable enough. It'll be able to handle it. Um. Yeah, really. Uh, any anything to size, get creative. Hmm. All right. It'll be it'll be more the more or less the same launching power, but you might be able to, uh, you know, um, do a little bit more than just smack somebody in the head with a rock with it. Let me. I'm gonna remove that. Just put in a light crossbow and then call it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the best way to do it. You can drag and drop the light crossbow and then just change the damage type. Damage type in the name. Yep. If I this Gotta one. take my head headphones off just for five seconds. Sure. Okay, all good. Uh. And then, let's see, line. So, uh, in in our seven days, uh, while while Nimbus is doing that, what would everybody like to do with your downtime? Um, I'm gonna go sing that song to that girl, the new girl. Yeah, Lufayo. Uh, that'll that'll be an evening. So you've still got seven days, honestly. <laughs> right. Uh, but um, yeah, you you can um definitely spend the evening kind of uh hanging out with her. Um in the in the kitchen uh or dining room uh that's set up here and uh basically she's um wrapped at attention to uh all the stories that you would like to tell her about um your adventures so far uh she explains to you that uh she was given and has read a large number of the reports that have been filed by the commission uh particularly from your group um but uh those are, in a lot of cases, very detailed light, and you are personally able to recall a lot more stuff um, cool. than what's actually in them. Oh, yeah, I will regale her with these stories. Hmm. I'm having a hard time. Plus, you've, got, you've even got one that hasn't even been reported yet. Right. Doesn't seem to want to give it to me here. Uh, what, what's the issue? Oh, it's proficiency that I was trying to add, not the item. Never mind. Oh yeah, you gotta. Uh, if you search it in the compendium, it'll be under the weapons header rather than the uh, proficiency header. Um, I see light crossbow in your uh, in your offense now on your character sheet. Yeah, I just dragged it there. Cool. Oh, and uh, in terms of weight, uh, that thing is going to weigh two pounds. Okay. So it's a fair bit lighter than a crossbow. Still doesn't want to give me the item. Um. Oh well. Uh, so the way it works is it it's loaded up into your offense section at the top of the page, and oh, then that's just where it, it's, oh, okay. Yeah, and then if you if you want to add it um to your actual inventory, you could just type it in there um gotcha. without the description or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it has like it has like inventory and weight values in the offense section for you. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily need to be in your um in your inventory specifically, unless you like it that way. Okay. 8320. Oh, that'll be good. This yeah, is mostly yeah, for when we fight a slat again and I can't hit it with magic. <laughs> that was pissing me off. Wizard with some neutral damage is always a good thing to have. Yep. I mean, I still eventually want to get at least, like, some 14 strength bracers or belt or gloves or something or wearable beard but you know just so i can carry more stuff uh-huh uh yeah uh ambergreen um 
so uh, you you spend this time uh, with Lufael. Uh, yeah. Other than that, um, what would you like to spend your week doing? Um, organizing kind of my notes uh, about the songs um, that I've been hearing and relationships between like that song in the redshift and the one that I hear in my dream sometimes. And like, I'm, I'm trying to uh, meditate on that. The, um, okay. Uh, Cause your, your dream uh, that you see recurs occasionally, right? Yes. Uh, so in this case, actually, it, across this week, uh, could you go ahead and roll me a uh, insight check? Um, yeah, hold on a sec. Because I'm I'm imagining uh, based on what you're what you're kind of talking about, like Amber Green probably um, has been trying with with some effort to like explore, remember, maybe progress in this dream as time goes on. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to figure out what it all means. Yeah. Okay, so it's insight. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hit that insight button and then we'll see what you get. He's here. Oh yeah, dude. Wow. Is it okay. okay I'm here? I'm sorry. I'm an hour off. I totally planned on being here. Welcome back. Um, Welcome back. What you missed is we have um, anime waifu from my home plane. Um, we is gave she the strong dad and overbearing. Maybe that's all I need to know. Uh, well, she may be powerful. Um, she's not exactly overbearing, but she totally fangirls on us. Well, all, like <laughs> Alvis Taver will only do anything creepy if she's like Sundere or strong girl type. Yeah, <laughs> nope, not that kind. Nope. Of are you? Are you uh, okay? Are, are you? For, you sound like you're eating. Are you? Are you here? Are you ready to play? No, I'm here. I'm ready to play. I had a Nutella sandwich in my mouth, so I'm still clearing it out of my okay. mouth. Gotcha. I just got home okay. after skateboarding and um, and, and uh, supporting a friend who has a band. You know, stay, like everything was healthy and everything. Don't have to worry about that. It's just sorry. I really planned on being here. I'm sorry. I'm an hour off. So we yeah, identify. It's, it's okay. Uh, oh. We're still we're still at Orvis. Yeah. Um, uh, I gave you your uh, marks and your XP. And everything from last time. Yeah. We're just doing some downtime right now. You almost leveled up. Uh, so we identified the dagger. It doesn't do plus one, but it gets one shot of con 15 save or 3d6 necrotic damage. For now, we decided uh, as a group to keep it under lock and key like the scepter, so that way if we total party wipe, we don't have to do a mission just to recover our stuff. If that's all right with you, then that's what. Yeah, gonna you sure stay. there was no bias, like uh, 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 toward you know. We already <laughs> wanted the scepter, so we figured you just want everything. No, 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 no. Actually, I'm totally willing to trade out the scepter for the dagger if I can keep anything. He's actually way more, uh, it, it, as type of selfish, he's way more bargaining. He likes you guys, so he's not that evil. Yeah, no, I, I, I figure once we've used the keys, if there's still any magic left in them, then uh, we'll distribute them among the team for whatever's going to be the most uh, utilitarian for us. So yeah, having okay. this dabby guy with the dagger totally makes sense once we're willing to risk it. We're gonna yeah. need that damage to kill that freaking fire giant, so you know. Yeah, it's oh, not yeah, safe. Absolutely. <laughs> um so uh back back to uh back to where we were uh we just now. Um Oh and I'm Amber Mega Green, Man now. Ambergreen has just yeah. rolled to uh Lucid Dream, basically. Uh and yeah. uh so all right. Um I'm also guessing that's a 20, because my wisdom bonus is 4, which means I rolled a 20. It's also got the green border, and if you hover over the number, you can see exactly what the dice roll was. Uh, yeah, see? So, yeah. There's my 20 for the night, guys. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm lucid dreaming Thank something I can do in real life. Um, so, uh, last time um, you had your dream. I believe the way it went was uh, you were sitting on one of the rooftops at Orvis, and uh, you were sitting next to 
um, this woman, the, the object of your uh, worship. Yeah. Um, and uh, she was speaking, but you couldn't understand what she was saying. It was, it was uh, uh, like, muffled, it's essentially, to your ears. Sure. Um, and uh, I, I believe uh, the last thing that happened in, in your previous instance of the dream was that she kind of uh, pointed at the horizon and uh, your vision was filled uh, with the image of a black pyramid. That's right. Okay. Yep, I um, that. Then, uh, and then, and then, uh, for a moment, you were back with her. She kissed your forehead and uh, turned a lock of your hair blonde. Yikes! Did that stick when I woke up? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was last time. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, so j just just for the base level, because I know it's been like eight months since that's happened in real life. Um, yeah, I was gonna say so, that was a lie. Uh. You're halfway through this same sequence of events before you kind of realize you're there. Um, and uh, what you see is um, a black pyramid. Um, it, it's sort of, it, it's more like understanding than seeing um, because. This thing takes up your your full vision um, in the dream. A uh, black pyramid underground. Inside the pyramid are chains, and attached to the chains is a immense figure. Uh, back at the rooftop of Orvis with, with the idol of your worship. Um, you still can't understand what she's saying, uh, but you can understand that there is a uh, sort of um, uh, pleading from her to you. And that's what you get uh, tonight. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Curious. Uh, again, that happens overnight. So Amber Green still has seven days of downtime. Uh, if you'd like to spend it writing songs and reports, um, I can give you your uh, four D4s of mental dice. Yeah, that's what I'll use it doing. Cool. All right. Uh, Naya, what have you been doing in your doubt time this week? Naya has been kind of aimless wandering. The last time she spent any time in Orvis, she spent her downtime going off into areas that she hadn't been kind of investigating. That's true. Places. You you have a little bit of time to do that, like a couple of days before the redshift yeah. power arrives. And it's you know it's been a while since she was there, um, and it there doesn't seem to be much that hasn't already been fixed or redone or renovated or at, whatever. At, at this point, that's true. Yeah, like most of the most of the city on either side of the river has been kind of left to. It's right. state. Um, and she's really kind of um, she's kind of been on her own and just a little bit of aimless wandering, and she's um she's kind of pensive. Um, she's she's coming up towards her her birthday, and it that usually prompts a little bit of contemplative thought but this year it seems to be a little stronger and um, there's some impulse to 
Um, I don't know, make greater connection. She's not quite sure what she's feeling. Um, but there's a sense of wanting to both be alone, totally alone, and also to connect with others more. So she's just kind of generally confused and um, pensive. And so she's spent, she spent the, the downtime kind of wandering through the buildings um, that have been built on the dais and watching people at work and just kind of poking her nose into stuff without, you know, trying to not be underfoot. Um, but I don't know that, that she'd say that she's done anything in particular. Um, a lot of, a lot of what she's doing and is going through right now has to do with kind of processing. There's been an awful lot of action for a while and very little time to actually digest it all. It's it's true. Yeah, you guys have been doing a, a lot of stuff. I mean... Uh, That's what yeah. she's doing, and I don't know that that would count for any points anywhere. It's, it's basically been, I mean, for, for from Naya's perspective, it's basically been uh, what you had like a... You had like a couple days after the flower sea uh to kind of like sit and rest and that was inside the the old temple uh nice damage roll in this thank you uh uh and Ooh, um, <laughs> that would hurt yeah. something uh but otherwise i mean you guys you guys basically ran straight from the flower sea down to this tree went through that whole wacky staircase came back here um that's right after the uh, the events at the tower, right after meeting the the dragons, like that's. I mean, as a oh, druid, yeah. she she actually needs contemplative time, mm -hmm. and she hasn't had any really. Yeah, and there's so many people around, all in close quarters when the when the redshift is actually on. Well, and, and you know, and as a as a druid of the coast, um. She's super glad that this water is cleansed so she can get some kind of rejuvenation from that. She's really more interested in the stuff going on down below. Um, but you can't go too far during the red shift. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she's just kind of pensive and wandering. And I couldn't say that she's done anything worth anything except that she needed downtime. And so she's processing understood that's that's a reasonable place to be uh mont lauren what have you been up to uh so there are a couple of things that i wanted to do um first of all i noticed that uh like i've noticed over several breaks in fact that alvis taver uh is a a sharp hand at cards so to speak what uh and I'm a fair hand with gaming dice, uh, so I kind of thought maybe we could swap tricks over our downtimes and maybe sort of become proficient in each other's tools. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm surprised about this, but totally, totally. I'll uh, even throw in some extra tricks uh, uh, about manipulating people just because I have a loose tongue. Don't know what I'm doing. Excited. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that, if you guys want to do that, that's definitely something you could do over the span of a few uh, downtimes. Right. Uh, and, and as part of that process, I kind of wanted to get like regular games going with the new recruits as a way to introduce them. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, uh, see, see, you got to be careful about that. Uh, my, my, my love, my dearest of my life, uh, the Brigadier, <laughs> she would be very abusive to us. I, I, I would like it, but not to you. Well, uh, it's a it's okay. a team building right. exercise. It's yeah. all for fun. So, um, oh, wow! I never thought about using that ploy. I mean, um... <laughs> right? Uh, the 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 rule of thumb is uh, no gambling for money. Um, at at base, uh, if if she catches you guys gambling for money, she'll bite your ears off. Um, but um, and I mean, I don't know if Mont Lauren would enjoy that. I if you guys are just playing, there's obviously no rules against that. It's not like you have much else to do during a red shift. 
And uh, am I gonna be am I gonna be abusively uh, targeted because I I'm a part of this, or is Mont Lauren going to serve as my uh, my uh, beard? Right, your shield, so to speak. Yeah, shield. Well, I mean, are are you guys trying to gamble? I rolled <clears throat> under the table, and it, Mont Lauren sounds like he's down for a cut of that because. And I... also, okay. Also, are you trying to gamble? Uh, money, or are you trying to gamble chores? Uh, chores and favors, not yeah. money. Surely Money's not. against the rules. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody Maybe. ever told you that it is Maybe disallowed to to pittance win favors. Can, can, small can, playing can, cards. We gamble, can we gamble pittens rations? I like rations. More food. <laughs> right. I mean, I you, you might be able to. Um, you might be able to like uh, that. Lucent might, you know, give me some extra time with her. So fungible goods, you know. Yeah. Um, but the second thing is, is I actually wanted to do this with the idea that I want to like size up all the newbies and compile yeah. a set of like uh, recommendations that I'm going to present to Van about how best to train them. Ooh, that's uh, awesome. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna follow off of that lead and maybe copy off of his work and maybe just come up with a dossier of my own, uh, with like nitpicks about paranoid details that I watch them doing and shit like that, so that I can report them to the Senate if uh, anything uh, terrible or questionable might be a play. Yeah, I'm sure she'll love that, dude. <laughs> that's what exactly what I was thinking. Uh, okay, so um, the. The the good boy over here um, is uh, compiling this information, and um, can you make me an insight check on this? Because I feel like that would be useful for um, kind of getting these people in terms of um, like getting card games together. Uh, that's not hard. Can I, can I uh, assist in that? Give them another roll. Absolutely, you can you can make a roll yourself too. Good. Um, so uh, between the two of you, um, I mean, I I figure you'd even like talk. About it. It's whatever. Um, yeah, I wouldn't hide from Alvis what I was doing or anything. Yeah, um, well, no, that's why I was copying out of his work. Yeah, um, kind of the uh, the sort of people you have. Uh, the commission now plays host to about. Uh, 300 people uh and uh that's more or less uh it kind of started about 100 um and has gone up since then um obviously there have been a, a handful of of people who have uh tragically uh died during the course of this uh expedition um but that that number is in maybe the 30s right now so yeah it's um not unfathomable losses uh and um the the sort of people on board are um a lot of uh a lot of skilled laborers uh builders craftsmen uh that sort of thing people responsible for handling the shipping lines obviously getting supplies from the empire too deep into um deep into the redshift zone is possibly the most important thing that goes on out here, especially with the timing between redshifts, keeping everything supplied and stocked up. Um, then you have, uh, so that's basically like the, the lowest and largest tier of the commission. That's probably a hundred to 150 people. Um, and uh, the re relative to just Orvis, the same kind of um, uh, ratio supply. Um, the next 75 to 100 people are um, kind of uh, the uh, scouting parties uh, and people like that. Um, they are the ones who uh, go out in small groups, uh, pretty good at moving quickly, 
um, pretty good at staying unseen. Um, obviously, these people can take care of themselves in the wilderness. They're soldiers. They were picked for their skills, uh, but they're not. Uh, you, you know, they're not going to be killing any bosses. Um, so, uh, uh, skill-wise, a couple of rangers, a couple of rogues in this uh, in in this area of people. Um, none of them of comparable uh, like player level to you guys. Um, and uh, the, these are the sorts of people who you usually um, confer with uh, sometimes before heading out on a mission of your own who have scouted out a place before you and found uh, information uh, and suspicious goings on that you can then investigate as the team who can actually handle real threats. Um, so then... Uh, Above above them, uh, you have the people who are capable of handling real threats. Those are the uh, the fighters, the the barbarians, the uh, 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 whatnot. Um, in, in terms of uh, layout, it's more more of the martial uh, classes are involved, uh, just because those sorts of people are more common in the world. Uh, and again, uh, aside from the actual leaders of the commission, uh, you guys are the strongest ones around. Um, everybody else in uh, the commission is uh, pretty pr pretty notably uh, weaker than you are. Um, the ones who are comparable to you are the handful of characters we've introduced uh, over the course of the campaign, uh, like uh, Angela, uh, Jacob, uh, and those folks. Um, and uh, and then you have you guys. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, the so-called aces of the commission who have uh, basically done everything important around here. Um, and uh, you would say uh, a lot of people look up to you. Uh, a, a lot of people um, kind of keep up with what you're doing. They kind of, they, they have started so almost looking to your team for uh, a certain level of leadership, especially when you guys are are staying at uh, uh, home bases that are not the main one where the rest of the uh, the, the commission bosses are. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, that is that that's kind of just the layout in general. Um, are you looking for something more particular that you'd like to forward on to Captain Van? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm specifically looking for recommendations to make getting ready to, like, okay, let me explain. In uh, Mont Lauren's mind, there's a war coming, right? And it's a war that we have to fight. Yeah, um, so you not, are, not, and I are on the same page there. Right, not just because you know it's the only way the expedition continues, but because legitimately, they're they're making the world a terrible place, and that's not cool. And and you know, Mar Lauren, Mar Lauren feels like anything that takes joy out of the world needs to be fought and struck down. And so we know who you're talking about, but to, to right. be clear for the rest of the class, who are you talking about? I'm talking about our our giant. Uh, and and dragon blooded friends from the north, mm -hmm. um, Morio's family, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and so you know, in in Mont Lauren's mind, uh, that's going to be a terrible thing. Like you know, he has he he really wasn't there for the worst of what happened to his world, but but he still remembers how it started, and he remembers how horrifying and demoralizing it was for everybody, and he doesn't want that kind of trauma to happen so here uh, tell, tell me tell right. me what what is montlarn's understanding of kind of like what he sees these these people and what they want to do so he sees everybody who just joined the expedition whether they meant to be or not as infantry basically oh, as sure, sure, sure. I, I mean i mean uh the the villains like what what's what what are his current thoughts on like what... oh he sees them as tyrants he sees them as the kind of people who did demand that you live the way that they do they demand that you live like he sees them as you know sources of darkness and the light basically um you know the, the kind of people who 
who will trample on anybody's ability to live the lives that they want to live, to, to, to be good people and be with each other. Instead, they'll have to be under the thumb of, of these arrogant assholes. Well, that's, um, yeah. He's seen their type. He knows what they are, you know? That's not unreasonable. Uh, I mean, yeah, you were able to kind of uh, wiggle your way diplomatically through that last encounter with them. Uh, but since then, uh, nobody has, um, nobody's encountered them again, fortunately enough. And it's kind of just been a state of, well, we can't go home. Let's keep going and kind of cross that bridge when we get there uh, for for the commission. Um, I mean, yeah. just as a reminder, Van's not here. Uh, he's he's setting off north. He's probably somewhere in the Cradian Empire making preparations and, and building his own squad right now. Um, uh, Ma, in Mon Lauren's mind, uh, he kind of feels like nobody's really taking it seriously right now. Um, but at the same time, he doesn't want, he doesn't want, uh, present company excluded. He doesn't want like to, to panic anybody either. Right. So his intention isn't to like bang the drum and stand on, you know, a soapbox and, and cry that the end is nigh or anything like that. But quietly he wants to get to learn everything there is to know about the people who joined the commission and, to show them, hey, we've got this, it's cool, just hang in there and learn how they all work so that he can recommend to Van how to train them when the shit hits the fan. Understood. Um, way more subtle in the way I'm going about things. So uh, your opinion of things is that um, when it comes down to it, if a fire-breathing giant walked up to Orvis today, uh, we're all if, doomed. If you guys were here, it would probably end with the giant dead, but probably also end with your home base in 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 rubble. If it's anybody dead. else attacked after that point, we'd be fucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys weren't here, uh, well, ob obviously you've got Dex and you've got Lucent, and they are extremely competent and could. Uh, in their own way, uh, throw you halfway across the planet. Um, but uh, right. uh, uh, aside from them, um, you think the you think on a very lucky day, um, the people who live and work here, uh, if if you guys weren't here, might be able to fend off a giant. Probably wouldn't be able to to kill one. Um, and probably would suffer heavy casualties. Um, I mean, th this is a difficult sort of thing because these sorts of people who are um, who have that kind of uh, special uh, spark to be uh, a, a adventuring class uh, are are rarities uh, in any world, and. Um, Obviously, so are people who can cast spells and all that stuff. Like most people, if you're able to elevate the common man up to a player class, they're going to be a fighter. Um, and fighters are still cool. Uh, Lucent's a fighter, but um, it's not uh, it's not the best, and it does take years and years of training to get to the competency to be able to uh, get to the point where you can you can actually uh, stand toe to toe with something like that. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, you think playing on the strengths of the commission and looking at what your weakest link is right now, um, you guys could really use some better defenses. See, like, that's what I've been talking about with like the right. perimeter shit and the bushes and all that shit. Like, it's not like, going to stop a giant, but. A wall, yeah, like Alistair says, some kind of like trap system, uh, some kind of prepper. Like you are, you're, you guys are basically unprepared for a um, an incoming attack. Um, if you if you had time to prepare, if you saw it coming, if you were able to meet it on the field, maybe you'd do okay. Um, but you'd be a lot better off if you had some some kind of like base you could launch an attack out of rather than being uh attacked 
uh, within, if, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, absolutely. Um, does Montlaren plan on raising this to anybody? Uh, yeah, uh, but leadership, like, you know, okay. I don't want to, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, panic I mean, you, anybody. You can talk to the Brigadier whenever you want. Yeah. yeah um, I abuse that. <laughs> uh, I would definitely bring my concerns to the Brigadier. I would also tell her, though, that I'm, I'm compiling, you know, more deeper information for Van, should we ever actually need to, to think mm -hmm. about this in the, in the terms that I'm considering it. Are you sure you want to do that? I mean, I, like... I'm reporting. Do you counsel it against it, Elvis? No, no. I'm just reporting a very similar thing to her, so she might, you know, tear your ear off for giving me ideas. <laughs> like, I'm just worried for you. Are it's you saying the information should come from a single voice? No, 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 Mont Lauren. I would never take the glory from you. That's a that's a hard earned thing. I'm copying off of your idea, of course. So, no, I'm saying because I'm. An annoying factor to her, and I'm hoping to maybe not be so annoying that if one of your reputation were to associate a similar thing with me, she might uh, reprimand you for openly sharing your ideas with me. And I would like you to keep sharing your ideas with me. Oh, my friend, and I think I you also like you. Know, I think you've missed an opportunity here, though. Oh, oh. Consider, for example, if we were to present our findings together, how much more serious the matter would seem in her eyes. Oh, because... And I'm how much more serious you, then, would seem in her eyes, huh? Avex Tavern glows a little bit, having been coached by the charisma tank, you know, Paladin, uh, having only a minus one charisma. Uh, Alvis Tavern is like, yeah, absolutely. Shit, that was supposed to demonstrate my minus one in charisma. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you don't roll like I do, man. <laughs> no, no, I thought it would just show, like, the stat. Like, I have a nine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think you can actually put that in the in the chat, but I, I understand. Um, yeah, so, no, he's like, oh, I get a whole, like, side of negotiations that I never thought about. Damn, let's do that. Um, yeah, in, in her office, doors closed, uh, seats, seats around, um, she, uh, you, you eventually provide this information to the Brigadier, and she says, um, I, I can't disagree, uh, with, with what you've, uh, written, uh, or explained. Um, I mean, it's true that, uh, while we do prepare for the worst, we're, we're not an army. Um, we don't have to be. We don't have to be, and ideally we shouldn't be. But, exactly. Uh, but we have to be able to defend ourselves. At the same time, we weren't exactly expecting a uh well, like you said a, a a tyrant or a group of tyrants living out here um and that does uh that does change things a little bit from just having the uh resources to defend ourselves from wildlife um though i believe the operations could be very similar there are historical notes that my master back uh in the in the guild they, that they taught me about uh, underdogs coming up against uh, bigger, more advantageous uh, armies. You know, the, all they used were simple uh, hunting strategies just targeted to different peoples. Surety, the naivety, as um, yeah, Mont Lauren has pointed out before, of these people, almost childlike behavior of these people, the arrogance. Uh, could be a tool used against them similarly to most deer or elk. With with that said, uh, th this this may not be an army, but I am a soldier, so uh, I would be wary of underestimating them. These people like that, Albus Tab. 
Noted. Arrogant, maybe, as you've described. Childish, maybe. But uh, you never know when that sort of thing is a play. Uh, when that sort of thing masks something. Uh, knowledge that we don't have. Uh, these people definitely have knowledge that we don't have. Um, and like it or not, uh, we have to either go through their territory, what they've what they've defined for us as a as a forbidden zone, um, risk the chance that they discover our operations again, or go far around them. And who knows how close to the tower they actually live? For all we know, they live in it. I don't think around them is Indeed. even an option. They said this is entire redshift area is their land. Well, it's only a matter of time until we're discovered. That's exactly what it is. I would say, fortunately, we haven't yet encountered them, but uh, that wouldn't be counting our encounter with Morio. Quite so. Also, it is a vast land. I'm sure we can just chalk that up to statistical uh, probability. He enunciates each word uh, as if to make them sound more uh, esoteric. Because he's smart, and he wants people to know that. Yes, exactly. He thinks that maybe this is, you know, arcane knowledge. Some kind of lever. <laughs> With, like, quotes around it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do you two have any suggestions or any ideas? Well, other I than... Ha I have a few. Yeah, well, other than building infrastructure, uh, Mont Lauren, the... You seem to have uh, rigid things where I where I might be out of scope. I I have some background um, in military matters myself. Um, we could set exactly. up earthworks. We could we could set up other defenses, as as Alvis Tower suggests. This this seems like a good idea to me. But also, I think it might be worthwhile to hold mock. Uh, defense drills or or military games from time to time to prepare people to to defend Orvis, for example. You're right, we're not an army, and maybe my mistake wasn't thinking that we are, but we should certainly consider ourselves a militia for the defense of the town, and maybe we should start treating ourselves that way. That's a good idea. We, we definitely have the resources to fortify, and if we, if we dedicate ourselves to it, uh, it it should be possible to do so in a way that we can um, have something we can drill out of. The, the redshift makes the timing of these things a little bit difficult, but obviously it's a, it is a high priority. It may slow down our um, exploration efforts, but... Well, in order... Sorry. In order to minimize on uh, the exploration efforts and training... Uh, books that I've read suggest that maybe just a morning routine for people who are here in camp, um, those morning routines can be used for basic training, and then maybe other military games could be planned, as Montlaren suggests, for later dates so that we can plan ahead of time for people who are here. There are long spans of time to which the redshift uh, leaves us in our walls. That's true. And... Uh... To our knowledge, did, did these people indicate to you whether they were able to traverse the red shift? From what we saw of Morio, it didn't seem like he could, aside from having that circle in his home. For yeah, once, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to say no, but I felt like they, uh, they could. Yeah, they or... haven't let slip whether they could or not, but I also wondered if they could. I thought that circle was like for travel. That circle That's... was a teleportation circle. Yeah, plan correct. Circle. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, you guys know that teleportation circles are, are uh, one way, so Morio was able to go to his home that you guys have taken over uh, and destroyed the teleport circle to uh, from somewhere else. Right. I how he, how right. he got back to somewhere else is uh, unknown. He would have to cast a similar spell. I, I assumed he had a safe place to go. And that's why I, he left the skull around. I assumed it was itemized uh, escape magic, you know? 
you teleported to a very specific location, maybe you had something that uh, was burned or used up on the person. You know, just because that's cool. <laughs> totally. At the very least, yeah, really, you've I been mean, sending we... things back. What did you say? At the very least, he had been sending things back. Uh, anything that right. he had found of value, since there was nothing there by the time we got there. He was stripping the place, yeah. Shit, that explains why everything was so empty at first. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, those methods you, uh, you witnessed. Of course, uh, the methods, yeah. Hmm. And you mentioned that these two had spoken to Morio to you, or spoken of Morio to you, correct? They called him a brother, didn't they? They did. Yeah, that, they, that, they said they it was family. They seemed to know he was dead. That's also true. They were very offended by the fact that I was wearing his clothes. Did they see him? They didn't. Yeah, I'm trying no. to. I'm thinking back if you were even at that encounter or not. Yeah, I think you uh, Alvis, managed to. Alvis, Alvis was not there. Oh, okay. I just remember it then. Okay, no. Yeah, I don't know how you remember Not it. Memory. I I watched uh, these. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, I like Yeah, this. no, it was, it was just Montlar and Naya and Nimbus. Oh, shit. Okay. No, uh, that, 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 that's totally false memory. Yeah. I absolutely watched that episode. I mean, it could be false memory in character. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, so you think they don't know that he's dead? I suspect they might wonder, like, I figure they probably know by now. We didn't exactly hide that we had a conflict with their brother that we felt we were victorious uh, with him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I was pretty sure one of you was pretty. Uh, but I also thought that after the fact that we probably should have held that closer to our chest because it was clear that they didn't know his current status. Yeah, well, I think it was Nimbus, but one of you was kind of snarky. I mean, I was, I was trying to play play uh, dumb at first, just you know, as if they, as if we had no idea about them or anything else. Once I realized that wasn't going to work, I started doing what I would do with a threat in the royal court. Uh, and so I started to treat them as they probably expected to be treated, which I feel like worked. I got more information it, than, than my otherwise. It, it, did, it did It did work uh, from, from your perspective. It did work when you were, uh, when you were able to portray yourself as, as a prince and talk on princely matters, uh, the, uh, the giant you spoke to, uh, seemed he kind of treated you as a prince who was worth talking to. Damn, you're the mouthpiece. Good to know. Um, I still told you to right fuck off. Naya but, did that. Yeah, well, I, re I remember Naya being offended that they didn't respect you for being a dragon, right? Or, or not. Even con giving any consideration to the fact that she might be noble. <laughs> um, well, if we're gonna bullshit, let's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, Albus Haver does have a serious um, suggestion for defenses, though, like uh, one that probably is within scope. Oh, what, what is it? And that is um, perhaps um, to the people who stay here within camp to uh, expend some time building a series of canals. Canals and or uh, dugouts, uh, foxholes, things that otherwise are natural earthworks. Do you and, mean on, on either side of the central platform? Because I don't see how you do that on the central platform without damaging it. No, on either side of the central platform. Uh, on the shores of the river, basically. Lucky yeah. for you, uh, or, or you might remember this from when you first uh, explored it, but Orvis is a city that features uh, quite a few canals already. 
Right. Um, yeah, exactly. I, like, perhaps you, we can expand upon them, you know? That this you, is you a good way to break up the bridges that. over them strategically. Possibly expand them, break the bridges, possibly drain them and, and make pathways through them or fill them with something treacherous. Yeah, uh, my idea was doing something similar as the Dutch. I get you. Um, that's an interesting proposal. Again, it would be have to be something that's worked on outside of the redshift, but it yeah, would, Albus yeah. Tiber wouldn't say the Dutch either, but you know, what yeah, I mean. yeah, uh, it would protect uh, from anything coming toward us during the redshift as well as outside of the redshift, as well um, as it would be a great boon for fishing and other such water resources. <laughs> Those things can easily be built within the system, at, um, within the city, as is by, um, by. Like, I, I don't think I'm overestimating the city. Do, the, do these tyrants know our location? They, do they claim they know about this camp, this, this fort. It, it wasn't it they Fort Maricus? Orbis? They, I don't think it was Orbis. I thought it was Fort Maricus that they knew about. Yeah, I think they know about Maricus. No, it sounded like they were talking no, about the one no. nearby. The we around. You're right. You're you're absolutely right, Nimbus. They know about Orvis. They don't know about America. That's way better of a situation, though. Okay. How? Yeah, Orvis is less protected. How do they know? Um, how? I mean, we don't know what their minions are. Morio was yep. using methods that were easy to see. We have no idea what Unknown or could have been, sort of uh, scouts they I, might have. I, yeah, I thought the general consensus uh, between you guys were um, that uh, Morio could have been sending the force. I, I wouldn't be surprised about that, but we killed him long before we found Orvis. I believe it's that they may have already scoured Orvis to some extent, except were warded off by that horrible creature that was there and weren't able to access it further. So we actually did them a favor in their eyes if if they actually came to clear us out. They don't know if we're still here. They believe... I bet they're willing to believe, unless proven otherwise, that we've left. But if that was the case, you'd think they would come here to loot the place anyway. Well, you, you did... Uh... See, uh, prom <laughs> promise them that that we would be leaving. Obviously, um, so they could just stumble up at any time, for all we know. See that 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 it was that exact logic when I was watching the video that made me think that it was Nair. God damn it! I wish the video was a thing. You're right. They could stumble up at any time. Uh. Really should shore up the defenses. Be able to flood this entire plain, I think. Create an island out of the city. I agree. What sort of technology does the Empire use to protect itself from, say, dragons? Do they have large... Uh, what do I remember seeing on the walls out there? I feel like I saw something. Dragons? See, this is what I thought about you. So, yeah. For a, for a dragon. Yeah. You would usually have the services of perhaps a few wizards. Uh, in some cases, I've heard of dragons being used to assist a city against dragons. Uh, but speaking to the mundane, uh, you'd also um, mostly rely on surface-to-air fire, and finally... Uh, in some rare cases, um, I know the capital city has the use of a handful of uh, special custom-built flying ships. Uh, but well, I don't think we're going to aside need airships. from perhaps a few ballastae, which we can probably have Smithy put together in good order. Um, this is why I exactly think that we should just flood the plane, make it really hard for them to get to Orvis. What about a, a bridge that can be raised and encourage in the swamp? Uh, I like the idea of the drawbridge. I mean, that's that's um less permanent. 
us. Yeah. We may be able to, uh, the, so the, the East side bridge is not even done. It's sort of just, uh, uh, like 20 sheets of plywood all nailed together. Um, <laughs> um, what if, what if we, um, what if instead of a, um, a, a drawbridge, we had a uh, buoy bridge that we kept to ourselves? That seems way more defensible. Like a buoy, yeah. like like one that floats in the water and float bridge. Yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly what I think. And likewise, the um, the encouraging of the swamp doesn't have to be exactly permanent. Yes, it's longer term, but our job here is kind of longer term. Um, if we create a series of canals, which would require, I, I actually don't know, but I believe Smitty, if he, put, if he put his um, efforts in levees and various different um, mechanisms to keep them flooded and or not, we could flood this entire plane in a controlled manner, then dry it off after a long period of time. Uh, to be clear, nobody's using the city anytime soon. In- it, if anybody were to wish to return to Orbis in some capacity, it would ha- necessarily ha- have to be after the redshift is solved. Uh, so any measures we take to defend our home base, I feel like are, are valid. And if that means, uh, well, uh, destroying some canals and ripping up some roads, I... It's it's, tempor- it's temporary destruction. Like that that's what I want to uh, that's what I want Smitty to work on, honestly. He has the brains for engineering like that. I've only read technical stuff and like I like I was unwilling to uh, ask about this kind of scope as before, but if you're if you're thinking about this, Lucent, then like a series of canals and then various different system uh, systematic breakages within those canals done by mechanism enough to uh, enough to slow down a giant yes yes exactly and there's already a swamp to the north of us isn't there the ground is already saturated the flood i mean we're surrounded by a swamp we're surrounded by it yeah it's a little bit more water and this could become sea level it would be a quagmire right uh, quagmire would be a great word for him to use. God damn it! Thank you. I mean, this is all assuming that his sister doesn't just make a wave of lava that they ride on or something. Like we, we have no idea of their actual mobility capabilities. Alva seems conflicted. He would like to see that, but we, also we, we <laughs> use every tool we have. I, I agree that it might not be enough, but we should use every tool we have. I believe it would, be fucking epic. it would be more worthwhile to invest in weaponry that can fell them than to invest in defenses that might prevent them from getting here. Anything yeah. short and of I, a wide-scale I, illusion, and they'll find that right here. Yeah, I think in terms of priorities, you're right. We need to acquire the means of an active defense first. But we should also enact any passive defenses we can with the the labor and and material we have on hand. I I had thought we were gonna, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I thought we were gonna save the city. I, but if if that's not on the table, then then I agree with Alvis Tower. We can make it inhospitable. That's no, no. The city can be hospitable. I mean, the lands around it. This is why I suggested a buoy bridge instead of a drawbridge. And also, Nimbus, I agree with you. It's just the uh, uh, allocation of Smitty's work that I'm uh, thinking about. We can, if we either can way, we need a Des Bridge as a kind of a first alert. Would they cross the bridge to get here, or would they simply jump the river? Break. What was that? I said, you mean treat this bridge as a sort of a fire break, or as like a firewall, rather, excuse me. Yeah. Right. But uh, again, if they came from a different direction, then that would, or, or like I said, simply cross the river, that would be useless. Likewise, that option, simply crossing the river, would become much harder upon a few more levels of, uh, of water. 
we could uh, fortify the buildings um, if we want to raise the water that high. I believe Smitty could create something with that much control. Hmm. A dam down. Strategic levies. Yeah. Like we, like we can still save the city. I, I'm talking about creating an adaptable city with the water. Oh. And it's already seemed like it's close okay, to okay. that in the first oh. place. Very much agreed. I have no intentions of tearing the city apart. Uh, we've, we've done what we need to do here, um, but obviously this is a historical site, and once we're done here, I'm sure many people will want to come uh, investigate and reclaim a lot of the things that have been lost uh, that we may have missed. Um, Restoration, yes. So, we'll do our best to keep things uh, safe, but Nobody's ever going to get to it if we can't defend it and we can't complete our goal. Um, I suppose at this point, it's really a matter of time and resource placement. We'll have to make some choices. I'm good it's I, 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 I'm good if that much is clear and that we're on the option that defense needs to be a priority. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And what what about you all? I know your talents lie elsewhere. What you personally, do you have any stake in what you're going to do with these people? I'd like to assist in training people. I, um, what that's I well, but I mean, on your uh, on your missions outside, uh, dealing with these dragons. Well, I can't speak for anyone, but my intention is to find out everything we can about them, to find their home, and then figure out how to deal with them once and for all. Good plan. Straight to the point. This guy's a doer. The hope would be that we have uh, people capable of scouting in such a way that they wouldn't be spotted by a giant, um, which is kind of a kind of a lot to ask of anybody, really. Well, I mean, giants are big, and if you can stay small, then they might not notice you. Uh, their heads are very high up. Uh, I could I could always do some, you know, stealth and ghillie suit training. I love that kind of shit. Hide and seek is my game. <laughs> um, so, uh, actually, the um, yeah. So, uh, she she basically says, um, okay, um, yeah. Uh, I'll take your plans into consideration. I think I think in the next couple of days I can have a physical and defensive drill wrote up for everybody living here. I can probably design one for the other forts as well. Um, and then it'll just be a matter of... Uh, preparing some walls in tactically advantageous locations and uh, seeing what we can do about some of Alvis Tavra's tricks and traps. Yeah, exactly. I, I likewise had uh, another um, thing just for those more naturally inclined, um, though it might not prove a killing act of defense. Uh, it would hinder greatly if we were to uh, plant various different uh, natural elements, large bushes that uh, could grow past a certain level of water, you know, plan for the kind of flooding that I'm talking about. Uh, really she's, get to know what you're hey, uh, A barricade doesn't need to kill something if it gives you long enough to shoot it with a longbow. Exactly, exactly. But if it has thorns, that's even better. If they think it's part of the natural landscape, they won't see it coming. Hmm. Well, there's not much. Uh, there's not much. Not much in the way of uh, city parks in Orvis that we've found, but 
uh, we might be able to transplant some stuff, perhaps pull up some of the um, stone tiles and whatnot. Well, haven't you seen that all the roofs seem to be indented? That, that's, a, that's a good thing. They have flat top roofs. We could plant there. Hmm. I'm sure our lizard friends would love to put a garden on every top of this, uh, of this city. Every rooftop. A bad idea. In fact, having, if we're able to get foliage up there by spring, we might be able to use those as hiding spots. Make the city look even more deserted than it was before. That as well would help. Good idea. All right. Well... Oh, go ahead. What's up, Mount Lane? Hmm? Well, I want me. Oh, I was going to say on a side note, Alvis Taver would be wondering uh, if his whip was done. Oh, yes, that was the um, whip with the uh, spike end, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, close to uh, what. Uh, uh, like that rope and dagger thing like that a scourge people use. Now, scourge is a different word. I, I thought it was like a dart and like I was just researching it today because I was hyped for the game and maybe getting it. It's like a rope and dart. It's the thing that you'd see certain monks oh, get, yeah. use in very particular. Right, it's more of a ninja is, thing. Yeah, but this is a whip, so it's more like a ninja meets a western thing because I'm trying to rip it from uh, Castlevania because honestly that's what I want. So it's it's basically it's it's a whip with like a single large dart on the end. Yeah, yeah. Like ball. Yeah, like uh, like a two a two like a double ended blade, like a large dart at the very end. Yeah. Okay. Um maybe even uh later on because I know this was uh, something I paid a lot for you could get it barbed so it could hook into the person you could do some fucking get over here shit with it but that's like that's later I just wanted uh, to get remind me did I, yeah was I saying that would turn into a 1d6 for you uh yeah because currently my whip is a 1d4 and I wanted yeah. to I wanted to make it a little bit more compatible with my uh rapier which is my heavy hitting weapon and that's okay. uh, uh I honestly I honestly forget. Did you pay for that already? Because I think we yes. talked about it last time. You did. Okay. Um, I, I I think I gave him the ruby with the golden housing and he was oh, very yeah, yeah. popular. Um uh, okay. Uh in that case, um it'll be done uh during this downtime and you'll have some time to practice with your new shiny new whip and uh you can indeed uh bump that up to a one D six. Thank you so very much. Um, that's that's about as much as you're going to be able to get out of the whip. Um, yeah, damage wise, but I'm yeah. thinking maybe later on utilities might be a thing that we could go for. Of this course, a, of, of course, the more anime shit you add to your whip, the harder it becomes to use. But you know, um, level uh, almost level six rogue. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm proficient in sleight of hand. I got like a plus eight. That's true. Just don't poke your eye out. <laughs> the first yeah, thing he does is pokes his eye out. Ooh, yeah. I just bumped that to a plus eight. Or a plus... God, God damn it. To a d6. I'm legitimately excited for that. Ooh, yeah. Oh, good. Good lord. Alvis Taver is as giddy as a school, a school girl on a Saturday morning. Okay. Right. Um. Uh, so for me, the dagger and then spending all day with Smithy was... That was one day, yeah. One day. So, so You'd have six days of your downtime to, uh, to do whatever one else. One day I'm going to be spending with uh, Dex learning his lightning bolt. 
Which is going to cost uh, he, me 7500 And, uh, yeah, that can happen. Alright, so we'll deduct, deduct the marks here. And then um, the usual um, scroll making, and of course if any of the recruits wanted to get on that, then to uh, uh, assist them with it as well. But I figure most of them are just kind of settling in this time. That's correct. Uh, so uh, this week Lufile is busy um, getting herself settled and kind of getting the scope of things and preparing for her first mission. Uh, so uh, we'll have we'll have yours go ahead this time. Um, what? Uh, okay, so you're gonna do a third level one. That'll be your five days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see your uh, Arcana and Persuasion checks. Okay. Okay. Character. There we go. Arcana. Persuasion. Okay, that's a total of what? Thirty-four. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so that's straight in the middle. Uh, so you get a profit of five hundred gold. All right. Very good. Cool. So that's twenty six eighty five. Then where are we at with the um the status on the forts? Uh, let's see. You're at uh thirteen twenty five out of three. Uh, here, let me just paste it into the Discord uh, for you. And actually, there should be a should be a couple more minor forts on that list nowadays. So getting the minor fort from three to four would give us what? Um, basically the same the same stuff that you have in the major fort, just at those locations. Okay. Uh, so like the the extra the extra dice on downtime and stuff like that. And then the major fort getting up to five would upgrade all of the facilities at the forts. Indeed. Hmm. That would probably correspond with potentially being able to get better uh better defenses in here, huh? Uh well in terms of uh funding for the commission, that's been solid enough that they've been able to not have to worry about that coming from you guys too much. Um getting getting stuff like walls built uh won't require your uh personal investment. Um, but still, if you want to get like the armor smithing, weapon smithing, and and stuff like that leveled up, um, that'll help. Okay, I don't know what sort of money everyone else has hanging around. What was that? Sorry, I don't know what sort of money everybody else has hanging around. But if we had enough, we could probably get the. Uh... The main forts upgraded. Yeah, I got like 300 marks on me. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find where we have a screenshot of the. Um, hey! Uh, the, how are you getting 300 marks? I'm not spending them on anything. And I don't have that anywhere near that. I think Mont Lauren did some scroll crafting last time. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that's exactly true. Let's see, where's it's in the OneNote the uh the rules for the um scroll crafting or do you actually have them posted in the game here? Oh uh yeah, I've I've got the rules right here. Uh here you go. I can paste them up. Five hundred Okay. Okay, so long as I have at least 500 kicking around, uh, 
I can continue production on my end. So that being the case, I could throw the rest at it and get those upgraded. But that would limit the ability to get the uh, the recruits involved with the process. Hmm. I've got uh, twenty six eighty five left. I don't know. I guess I'll hold off until we're ready. So, any any hard decisions from the party? About what now? Oh, um, actually making the the financial contribution to upgrade the fort. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, I'll throw my hundred now. Uh, 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 Alvis Taver looks through a bunch of things and swears to himself and thumbs up, uh, one red gem. This, uh, Serb is a red gem from a set. Um, a red gem, two blue gems, two green gems. Um, I got these from, uh, Snake Statue. That's correct. So uh, I'm I'm giving up one red gem. Okay. Uh so you how many of those are you still holding on to? I still have the two blue gems and the two green gems. Okay. Um so let me let me just double check. I have how much those are worth written down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Unless you've also got it. I what? have no idea what those were. He actually uh, took those very quickly and said I like uh, if you remember, it was actually a thing that he rolled sleight of hand for, so that uh, uh, yeah. I have them right here. Um, they were uh, they're twenty five apiece. Uh, what's, what's the target we're trying to achieve? Um, so we need two thousand, just under two thousand five hundred. Well, you just got twenty five gold pieces. <laughs> Are you going for marks or gold? Marks. I mean, they're the same, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I can donate 29 marks. That leaves me with around 100. I could always ask how much uh, 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 favors or stuff I'm making uh, on, on the uh, downtime that Mont Lauren and I had on the... Uh, uh, on the initial first few days of our dossier making. And then I could, you know, sell those and then turn those into uh, uh, donations. But I, I don't know how much I made if we made anything. So the trick is you didn't make anything. You made you made favors and chores. The trick is you sell the favors and chores to other people. Exactly. Yep. I'm not gambling exactly. for money. Exactly. And also, if like for instance, they uh, give us monetary goods and other things like that, they can do that. Or also, for instance, man, really, I don't want to do this. Uh, kids, mm, man, if you really don't want to like do all those chores that, you know, I may or may not have cheated you into getting, then perhaps then you could give me some marks and then it can all be even. I'll do my chores. I'll sell you the free day back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. See, that's not gambling. Albus, is that what you want to do with your week of downtime? Uh, yeah, yeah. That That's basically it. I, I remember I was copying off of... Uh, only, uh, only a nice deception check, and we'll see how that goes for you. Sweet. Yeah, see, I was doing the darker side of uh, Mont Lauren's insight stuff. God fucking damn it. Of course I rolled a one. Two. I rolled oh. a two. <laughs> uh, you, you try this. Uh, like, even on a few of the noobs, 
they're just like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, dude. I'll listen. I'll I'll muck the, I'll muck the latrines. It's it's whatever. You you won fair and square. I'm I'm not paying you to do it for me. Next time. Next time, bro. You'll be in these latrines. Maybe, or maybe you just lose again. And it sounds like you want to be in here so badly, so maybe you should just throw the next game. Ah, uh, no, no, that's that, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> um, as monetary stuff goes, like, have, has anybody gambled like uh, any pelts, any you know, rings, any 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 underwear, any socks, any any weird shit? Um, I'm going to say not anything this time that you can sell off, uh, but uh, that's something you might be able to build up to. Okay, okay. Nimbus, are you settling on 2021? Where yeah, that makes Nimbus up the difference. I make scrolls. Oh. <laughs> Shit. I, like, I knew you were doing yeah, that. Yeah, he's money damn. making every, okay. every downtime. Uh, I, made, I made scrolls, and then he fixed the rules because I was making too many OP scrolls. He's like, wait, shit, my math is off. Yeah, I, I did the percentages a little bit wrong originally. Um, I don't think it mattered it's still too pretty much, lucrative, though. though. Um, yeah, it is. And my guild has given me... Or I, I actually don't know if my guild has given any donations the, before. The it. two times I've done it, it literally doubled what I had in my pocket, so... Okay, so we're at twenty four fifty plus thirteen twenty five. So we're twenty five short. Are we? Uh, twenty five gold pieces. Were you putting that uh, ruby in? Yeah, yeah. I put okay. that. I, okay, I, put okay. that red, I put that ruby in. Nice. All right. That that puts us just over the threshold here. Holy shit! I did something. <laughs> and, My twenty five uh, counted. Cool. Uh, that brings us Go up home, to kids. level level five uh, home base, um, which means uh, you guys get five d fours every time you do some uh, uh, physical or mental uh, downtime activities. Um, weapons are up. Weapons available for sale are up to fifty gold. Uh, Armor Smith has up to AC fifteen. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's most of the big stuff. Cool. Uh, anything beyond silvered, or is that still the highest, uh, augment we have available? That is still the highest one. Okay. Um, yeah. I should get my hammer silvered. How much would that cost? Hundo? Uh, I think silvering is a hundred gold flat. Uh... Huh? Because <laughs> Did you have I have exactly a hundred marks. <laughs> let me let me double check for you, so I'm not ripping you off. Uh, you, while you do that, I'm gonna grab some water real fast. Okay. Why why aren't you selling off you know cheap EP renditions of your songs to the people outside of the uh, fort? My guild could sponsor that. You want are, me to? Are there want... people outside of the fort that really want to hear me sing right now? Yes. Oh. Yes. I wonder if you could get Nimbus to do, work do with you, you have... to make a scroll of minor illusion that casts the illusion of your song being performed. Oh my oh, god, that would shit. be fucking better. But no, I, I like initially what I was saying, Amber Green, is if you give me some of the sheet music, specifically put your name on everything. Yeah, it's else, 100. I can get you a sponsorship deal with a guild and they will put out your shit and advertise it as stuff coming directly from here. And then it's all up to you to advertise yourself as your showman. Okay. Live, okay. And, live and direct. But, but then the question is, do you want to, do you want to have all this stuff now or do you want to wait until it's all done before you bring it to the world? No, right. no, no. This yeah, is why I'm, I'm waiting until I'm shit. waiting until I have it right. You don't want to put, you don't want to put out EPs like build the hype. He like it, it's he not really my thing right now. Hype, yeah, I, I, but I'm not really about hype. I'm chasing my muse. Okay, I will pay a hundred marks to have my hammer silver, my sil, my hammer silvered. Silvery hammer. Okay, cool. Got it. Uh, you can mark down then that it is silvered, and that'll be done what for is you. Silver you do? Um, some monsters have weakness to silver. Yeah, it just makes it better than a plain old hammer. Yeah, it, it does not affect it in any other way. Um, 
So uh, it's it's a helpful thing to do. It's a bit expensive, but in case you happen to run across something that counts as a werewolf, perhaps. Right, um, lycanthropes. There are a few other things out there that Silver is. Uh, yeah, some about. undead. It's pure. Um... Cool. I, I think that more or less covered the downtime. Now, uh, something we didn't get to talk about um, uh, because, oh, my connection to the server has been interrupted. That's fine, because I'm just talking. Um, something we didn't get to talk about uh, when uh, you guys first got back, um, Albus Taver, uh, you um, were with the party when you uh, got back to Orvis and saw all the, all the new folks uh, around. And um, Lufile introduced herself to you, but uh, and this this was later in the evening, so you you took your rest and you got up in the morning and did all your stuff later on. Um, in your uh, in your attempts to set up this totally not gambling game that you've been doing, it's not uh, fucking gambling. Uh, no, no, it's absolutely. a team building experience. Uh, no, Lauren even said so. He's a paladin to, to create your team building experience. Thank you. Um, like, it was a good idea. Off, off in the other side of the dais, you didn't see them um, previously, uh, but um, uh, your your initial reaction is. Uh, well, there, there's no way that guy could be here. And um, then he notices you looking at him. And he notices that you, you have noticed him. And uh, you, you see that it is, in fact, him. And uh, your your gut reaction to recognizing this person is, oh, no, it's him. So who the fuck is this? What, where do I need to go? Uh, else? Am I by a rock? <laughs> I've been barrel aged here. Shit. Um, I'm pulling out everything that identifies my barrel HQ as my barrel HQ and putting a top on it. Stay. So, this. Um, Nobody's home. This, this tall, pale, uh, black haired, black coat guy uh, slinks over to where you are fiddling with a barrel. Um, your acquaintance, Mr. Sharp, uh, says, Alvis Taver, whoever would have expected to see you oh, the shuts all the way screen. out here? Ah, oh, jeez. What do you mean? I, 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 I've, been, I've been putting notes to the guild this entire time. Ha, I know. They've told me a lot. Uh, Overseer Alcose says hi. Uh, they never write, though. He turns around and shrugs. How you doing? He puts out his arms in a big hug. Or expecting a hug. He, uh, he basically, like, puts his hand on your head and just rotates you into the other direction um, so that he can step past your hug. Um, he says... Yeah. Uh, well, she's my overseer. I mean, uh, I'm happy to deliver messages between her and you um, now and then. Uh, anyway. Um, ah, yes, yes. I'm here for the time being. Your, uh, uh, call me, call me reinforcements. Uh, ah, I've been asking for reinforcements this entire time. Do you want my reports? I have more dossiers that I've been giving to the Brigadier. You are also my boss, so you deserve them as well, right? Your boss, I'm flattered. I didn't think you thought of a fellow agent that way. Ah, well, you're closer to the Overseer than I am. You have more pull. He nods. He says... Longer time. Uh, it, I don't know if there's a term for senpai in your world. He's kissing up by saying that. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 can, you can get the gist across. 
um, you know that this strategy uh, is something that this man will allow you to believe works um, until he doesn't need you to believe that anymore. I'm doing it more so I'm showing a sign of respect. Got it. Um, he, uh... Now, not, he, not, he, he, he leans in and, and says, um, hey, listen, uh, we're from different agencies, but now we're co-workers. So, uh, I think I'll be doing a similar thing to what you've been up to and reporting back to the the club uh, with all my findings out here. Um, Quite so. And and you're a student, right? Of right? course. Of course. Of course. The, the, that, that hasn't changed about our, uh, uh, our, our job for students. Uh, and of course, you and I will watch each other's backs, as usual. Well, of course. Yes. Exactly. In, in fact, you should go to Lucent and tell her that you are actually associated with me. She would just... Um, oh, never fear. I have. Uh, we've, we've made quick friends, in fact. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, by the way, Alvis Taver, um, in your line of work, um, watching each other's backs is uh, a little bit less of a friendly promise than it might sound to people who are used to uh, doing things heroically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy's being it, it, being a jerk, a real uh, schmendrick. Yeah, real ass. So, so you said you had a message? You, you were passing on something, or are you just here to kvetch to me? Oh, uh, no, no, no real message. Uh, Overseer Alcoze simply says hello. Sweet. Uh, you know, uh, I always send my regards to such strong women. Uh, I'm sure she'll be happy to hear it, as always. Mm. Uh... I'll, I'll see you around here. I suppose I'm, I'm yet to get my first mission, uh, uh, but perhaps I'll join this game of yours. I've been hearing about. Oh, it's it's fantastic. Honestly, you should you should join in the team building experience. I have the backing of a a noble paladin showing uh, uh you know showing everybody that maybe you know shit's going on. It, it it's also it, it, you know it, it it's also heartwarming team building that's what you've taken to calling it huh oh, very good what are you talking about taking to calling it we're we're all good people here friends obviously uh do, do you know of the situation that's actually going on we're, we're kind of in a war-like situation like they they sent you as backup i feel like i i, I uh, the sly talk aside the situation uh, that's true i have i have heard about your altercations uh what are you asking me to save your skin this time no oh, absolutely not no i can I, do I'm it i'm asking you if you i'm sure you can i uh, no no i'm more asking you if you um what your plans were uh, on downtime while the red shift was currently about. Um, I don't um, know what your agency specializes in, um, though I haven't been given anything specific, this being my big first mission and everything. Um, I'm really I'll be, trying I'll be ingratiating myself with the, with the uh, locals, the commission, taking notes, making sure I know who I can uh, rely on here. Uh, and... Would you would you would you like a um a, as a fellow agent I I can give you access to my dossier. I'll take you up on that. I give him uh an edited version of my dossier. Specifically, I leave out my inner circle. Sure. 
Uh, that includes Lucent and all of the people who are in charge. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, at so, least I will supply that information, but in the edited format. Yeah, uh, he says, "Oh, very good. I'll uh, I'll make sure to cross-reference this." Um, but uh, I'm sure I'll be getting my first assignment soon. I expect uh, the kind brigadier will be sending me uh, somewhere uh, close to the front lines. Sure. Oh. Uh, oh. So perhaps I'll see you out there. You're, you're gonna be you're gonna be scouting. Well, maybe something like that, supporting uh, some of the others. Absolutely. Oh, there, there's there's many a strange thing here. It's actually. Uh, as my personal, um, uh, as trying to collect things, uh, which is what I've been trying to specialize in, like there's, there's no amount of strange oddness about this place. Have you seen the soap? Uh, I I have not seen the the soap. I give him one of the many vials of the soap that I was playing around with that basically are just soap experiments, like. That this is just mundane soap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So he, he, I've, he I've had it for a here. very long time. Okay. <laughs> it's like very, very interesting find, Alvis Tavern. I see why they uh, they sent you first. That soap naturally grew out of the river somewhere. That guy's an asshole. Nah, <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, absolutely. He's kind of the best. Kind of the best kind of asshole. Yeah. The you, you got some. Dude, I'm sorry. I have to say this. Uh, what what was your name again? Uh, you got his name is Sharp. Sharp, Sharp. You got some schmutz on your uh, on your shirt there, uh, and he kind of pops his gold collar out a little bit and uh, brushes off a little bit of dust. And he's like, "Well, then I've supplied you with some good information so far. Um, uh, I, I again, I don't know what your specialty is, uh, being that uh, you've been." An agent longer, I'm sure you can uh, make your repertoire around here without any further help. I've done my part. Agreed. Well, uh, we're 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 in close proximity for what? How long? A, a week? Uh, it, it, it depends. You'll effort. honestly feel it. The the red shift is something uh, akin to being on a boat. <laughs> I'll play that little tune on my flute. What do you mean? If I hear you say that, and I've been listening to this conversation, <laughs> which I have, when you say that, you'll you'll feel it. I'll just like whip my flute out and play the little tune. Everybody kind of feels. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that, Amber Green. Uh, special. I swear, like you it's the thing keep, I'm working on. It, it, even if it's not about your quest out here, like you you gotta come on, sharp, sharp. This guy here, he writes music. Like, he tells me that he's searching for his muse and he's not going to sell anything uh, pertaining to the uh, expedition that we're on. But we got to sell him into accepting the patronage from our club so that, um, you know, he can make some money. And he gives him that, you know, high eyebrow. You're like, this is a guy who can make us some money. I can always write him a recommendation. Most definitely, like, but uh, on, on top of that, you know, you know, you got two guys now, Amber Green, saying that, you know, we can get you some recommendations. Do you have any other work? I know you're searching for your muse out here, but your name in general is associated with this trip. If you don't want to build hype for your next coming work, build hype in your name at least, so that when your muse is addressed and properly written, that people will know that the name of such a great artist who has achieved their muse. They'll know when I'm done. C sharp. It will be undeniable. My work is somewhat cut out for me, but I would like to see more done. And he kind of turns his back on him. Uh huh. Signaling that everything's over. Uh, you know, pops his gold collar again, you know, showing off his little broad double shoulders. locks. Yeah, because, you know, it's a little, uh, he, he's a little harder worked than this maybe, uh, you know, city boy. 
you know, now that he's been out here for literally two, three years. That that is true. Yeah, compared to compared to back home, this is very much not that. And uh, and he'll go about addressing his barrel home. All right. Uh, Sharp will leave you alone after that. He's fine with that being the end of the conversation. Good. I, I am really fine with that being the end of the conversation. He'll Fuck shit anybody but Sharp. He'll he'll be. I mean, he's here now, so uh, he'll probably find you again later if he wants. Oh, it's part of business. Of course, you'll yeah. find later. Um. Okay. Uh, finally, finally. Um, I think the last thing, the very last thing that happens um, during this downtime is uh, the the day after you guys get back from your quest, um, another team of scouts rolls in. Uh, and this is this is a couple days before the redshift proper actually hits. So uh, they're 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 a day or so ahead of it. Um, and uh, they're reporting in, and uh, Ambergreen and Naya, uh, you just happen to be around while while these people are uh, discussing what they what they found, and. Um, you overhear them, and I'll leave it up to you what you'd like to do with this overheard knowledge. Um, that uh, they're trying to basically compile a report about a uh, some kind of crater like discovery, um, but specifically, uh, some kind of some kind of crater that was uh surrounded by uh giant footsteps in the snow nearby. Uh oh. Giant footsteps and can I like break in and be like, whoa, 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 how giant? And and <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can absolutely kind of uh involve yourself in this in this discussion. They so they 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 got back probably um probably 20 minutes ago and they've basically been uh they've, they've just sat down at the nearest convenient spot and have been deliberating like how they're gonna present this to uh to the brigadier yeah so did you hear that naya yeah yeah she was uh yeah, both of you yeah, happened um, to be nearby and and heard this info um yeah i've got a couple of questions like where's the snow right i was um, gonna say well, oh, uh, it it blizzarded last time. Um, okay. So, uh, but the, were they the main... melted? Um. So they'll say, uh, "Yeah, I mean, we <sighs> first thing we found was was this big ass crater in the ground. Um, so that was that was a big enough deal that we figured it was worth checking out and taking a closer look." Um, but uh, we were going around, and we almost tripped and fell into uh, over, over a, a, what we thought was just a, a dip in the snow. Uh, took a couple steps back and realized it was shaped like a boot, big as a person, maybe a, a, a human. Wow, um, like a giant's foot. Yeah, <laughs> giant foot. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Can't say I can think of anything else that uh, could be that big. That's objectively not good. Uh, th this was a ways away. And, yeah, uh, how far away was this? A uh, couple days out from that uh, that old temple up north. In which direction? Uh, east, mostly. Just outside the swamp, actually. That sounds right. That does sound right. We were about to make the full report uh, to the brigadier. Um, I mean, uh, we can we can give it to her and and. Um... Yep. Hey, this this kind of sounds like your guys' uh, sort of thing, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I think we run into 
run into uh, what made those boot prints before. Um, so yes, you should definitely make your report to the brigadier. Um, be as accurate as you can about location. And we'll probably need another truck out there after the redshift is over. All right. Yeah. Um, they'll uh, they'll all file in to um, where the brigadier is located and uh, disappear for a half hour to um, to get the full details uh, converted over to a useful uh, piece of information for her. Um, so later on, what you're able to uh, get out of that um, is that, uh, like they said, uh, a couple days east of the temple site, um, there was a crater, uh, maybe 40 feet deep in the ground, some kind of like uh, less of a crater by its description, almost like a fissure split into the ground. Um, and uh, all around it, um, there were these these massive boot steps um, that seemed to uh, come and go, and uh, they were they were embedded in the snow and um, had not yet been snowed over when these things were found. Did it look like an explosion site? Uh from their description, um, it, it from their description, what you got was it was kind of like um, really, really a crater was the best way that they could describe it to you. It was right, it, it, an impact crater, or yeah, some sort other of, kind of crater, it, like not not necessarily the kind of thing you'd see when a space rock lands. Um, more, more like a crater that was like created by an earthquake or something. It, it, like, like something split from below the earth and came up or something like that. Okay. Um, We're going to want to know where that location is. And Anaya turns around and back to her group and says, I have a feeling we might have found a teleportation location like incoming to this world. Or something burst up from underground. Is it, was it anything, yeah. anything that hints that it might be like that other thing we found in a crater? Uh, the, uh, the, the thing with the robot stuff. Yeah. For lack of a better word. Uh, they didn't see anything like that there. Uh, w would you like to press the scouts a little bit more? Is that yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah, exactly. What else was around? Uh, like, so uh, they'll say um, they'll say it, it was like um, it was like a crevice in the ground, and uh, one of them says the weird one weird thing about it was it looks like um. It looked like something may have been scooped out of the center of this pit in the ground. Uh, there, there was a, oh, there was an odd, sort of, except it, it didn't really look like you know man-made. Um, But it, it it looked like maybe somebody Giant went at hand. it. Uh, somebody went at it with shovels or something. Oh, okay, maybe a shovel. All right. Basically, just a dip in the ground with a crack. Um. Ah, here's a good way to describe it. Um. like an old log that has been partially split with an axe. So it's all uh, jagged and cracked. Mm -hmm. But there's a there's kind of an outside going in 
sort of way to it. That's what it looked like. Like somebody's tool that had broken, except huge? Uh, well, there weren't any tools left over that we could see, at least. No, I know that, but I mean, like, say you have, like, a big axe or something like that, and you use the literal log as your handle or something, and then it broke, you would take the axe head. I guess. I'm really hoping there's not a 40-foot-tall axe out there, though. Ah. Giant. Well, I was gonna say, there is a giant. Well, yeah. Did he have an axe? Uh, yeah. I didn't see one. I don't know. No, he wasn't carrying weapons. Just, just uh, for for facts, knowledge. Good to know. <laughs> if we're doing false memories, you know, everybody could just panic and think that they did. But yeah, no, he was carrying a bitchy little girl on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, I would like to steal her clothes too. Would you like to uh, rephrase that in any way? What? They were very <laughs> nice. Okay. Alvis Taver has an appreciation for nice clothes. He's entirely interested in the clothes. <laughs> sure. But she was a bitchy little girl, not a bitchy strong girl. He has a very particular type. Uh, just Do you look so anything you, like Lucent? Just so you know, she is um, uh, an adult. Not she. She's small compared to the giant. That doesn't mean anything. I know. Yeah, she, I know, she was picture. of your type, for what it's worth. But wasn't she like oh. a fairy or a gnome or something? There was there was something in the picture. I remember thinking, oh, oh, that's, oh, that's oh. If she was if she was a fairy or a gnome, then absolutely fucking not. Alvis Tever has a height thing going on too. Um, hang on, I'm trying to actually find where the hell her token is. Uh. Because I can, I can show you guys again. Um, but no, just the clothes. Absolutely not. She's already designated herself as an enemy. There she is. How tall is she? Uh, human. Uh, shit. And she's soon dead, eh? Uh, that's... I mean, that's up to you to decide. Um, Maybe that eh? I, I I don't know. She she has to be strong, bitchy, and over overbearing. Maybe responsible. Um, she she was the one who uh, had to be convinced by her brother to not kill you all outright. Yeah. Yeah, but she's my enemy, and she wanted to kill me. Like I can have an appreciation for an enemy's beauty, but no, I I like the clothes. They need to be shrunk down. But if they don't fit me, I, I, I was under the same impression as Alvis Taver when I was watching the video that, you know, she was small. I apologize if I made that unclear then, though. No, she is a full-sized uh, woman of indeterminate species sitting on a giant shoulder, so she looks she looks small. She's uh, any, any human can sit on a giant shoulder with ease. I, I would like I, to rescind my comment, then. Um, I don't think I quite thought that the giant's Feet, boots, would be the size of a human. In terms of scale, I think my imagining was a bit less than that. Well, yeah, you know, I think about a person with small feet. Uh, Height-wise, height -wise, this particular giant was about 20 feet tall. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good amount. Um, uh, well, it was a long time ago, but I, didn't I post like a size chart one time that was pretty neat in the Discord? Wonder if I Anybody that. giant or not would say it was a good amount. Right, what I'm thinking is that, you know, we have some recent experience with giant, but I'm wondering if, if this giant <laughs> human sized boots is, <laughs> um, a different one. God damn, a different bigger one. one. Fuck. Ah, I found Indeed. it. Um, here you go. Uh, if you look at that, th this is a pretty cool uh, visual guide that I found one time. Um, but yeah, looking at like the the human to giant ratio, um, 
a human standing full height would maybe at best come up to a giant's knees. So yeah, if you like laid flat on your back, you might be able to fit into a giant's footprint. Yeah, but what kind of giant are we talking about? Storm giant? Hill giant? Goliath? Yeah. Uh, I don't think you guys uh, actually checked. Do you want to do a nature check? May I um, please... Uh, Nobody who wasn't there would be able to do it. They could describe it, and I could do an insight based off of things that I've read. Maybe. And that... Okay, you know what? You can do it, but you can do it at disadvantage. Okay. It'll, it'll, be, it'll still be nature, though. Okay, best. All right. Wasn't there a picture of the two together? Ooh. I Ooh. suck. I thought I uh, remember a picture of the two together. I don't have a picture of the two together, but I have his token as well. Um, one sec. Well, that's probably my worst roll ever. There wasn't a picture of her standing on her shoulder? I swear to God, I saw that. Yeah, uh, I, I have that image in my head. That's a pretty cool collective imagination, and I'm glad I'm glad <laughs> I created that for you guys. Man, but I, I love that, that, that shit. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if I contributed to that, guys. Yeah, that's what I remember him looking like, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he does have a beard made oh, of fire. Was it really just maybe the association of the two tokens put together in the way that Probably. they are right now? Yeah, it might have been. Um, it it might have been that. Uh, Montlaren or Nimbus, do you guys want to make a nature check? Yeah. Uh, Evergreen can try, too, with advantage. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll give it a shot, but I'm terrible at this kind of stuff. Alvis Tavern. Nature? Yeah. Um, Ooh, look at me. In terms of trying to like figure out what kind of giant this is. Okay. Uh, Montlarn's probably the only one who gets close. Um, has Montlarn ever seen a giant in person? He lives in a capital city, right? I've, he, surely he's seen a giant in oh, different yeah. formats. And uh, don't forget he was squire to a group of knights, too. So Yeah. Um, just in terms of like uh, skin color, height, uh, and that sort of thing, and overall body shape, um, you would guess storm giant. Um, but storm giants usually don't have like dragon scales and shit. Obviously. Holy shit! A storm giant is the worst kind of giant. Albus Taver says. Certainly the ones in the stories. Well, that's, that's exactly what I mean. Storm giants are, in fact, the, uh, the, the, the tallest. The ones that fuck your nan. So and how would we Shadow even be him. able to hear a little person on his shoulder? Like, she'd be so far up. I'm screaming in her ear. In his ear. I mean, she'd only she'd only be like forty, fifty feet away from you if she's talking loud enough. You can you can get yeah, it. Yeah, like a roof of a second story house, yelling at the street. Yeah. yeah, funny enough, I've actually read a study that was done a while back, specifically about the question of whether generals uh, and their armies could hear them uh, huh. giving their noble speeches and whatnot. And it goes on to various different tactics and whatnot. But um, if I remember correctly now don't quote me because i read a ton of this interesting kind of stuff all the time and so it's in the back of my head mixed with a bunch of other bullshit um it was anywhere like 70 to 90 feet was an effective range for a single person who was trained in oration and giving speeches to be heard so she's at the minimal edge or, or sorry the maximum edge. edge i i i assume also of this tavern that's that's with the uh, caveat of like a thousand other dudes standing shoulder to shoulder, which makes a lot of noise, even if they're being quiet. Um, Interesting. I actually don't remember if the article talked about that. I, I feel like if, if it's just the five of you people standing out in the middle of a field, it's probably it would be very quiet. Yeah. yeah to, to hear somebody even from maybe like 100, 150 feet um, if they're shouting. Um, but yeah. Um, uh anyway, uh Montlaren, you're you, you kinda are able to kind of figure out that, that 
that guy was probably some kind of storm giant. Right, at that size, he probably couldn't really be anything else. Yeah. Scream! They're the ones in the legends. Yeah, the fee fi fo fum style. Yep. Yeah, hill giants are much, much shorter, as you can see, and uh, also very stupid. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, hill giants are your standard big dumb giant. Storm giants are not the dumb ones. No, no hill giants are. are angry, vengeful, and will kill people because they believe that we destroyed their civilization. I, as a historian, think that that's complete bubkiss. I mean, how the fuck do we destroy a giant? Probably by being clever rather than by being powerful. That's yeah, always how the stories go. Groups, just, right? that, that, that's exactly how the stories go. And though I love them, they're just as clever as we are. And giant. And storm giants are magical too, apparently. Even worse, Amber Green. <laughs> Look at me, I'm small and I have a slight advantage over some of you folk because I have a magical nature in my blood, right? But it's all offset by my height. The giant! Oh, imagine a giant all this time. <laughs> no, in my, my whole man, we used to fight them with griffins. Wow. In truth. You've seen a griffin? It's not the biggest. Oh, yes. Not That's the biggest of things that are the most powerful. It's the smallest and most numerous whose lives mean the least. They will always overwhelm. Ooh, like ants, right? Like rats, like ants. Like things so small you can't even see them. Alvis Taver really kind of likes that and brightens up a bit. Especially because he spent a good, like, beginning portion of his life in a dank, dark mine. Working for a living. His rats were his friends. You know, he was sort of like an opposite Vladimir Tepesh. Yeah. He kept his pets, shared his. Of course. Uh, so we're, we're reaching the end of your week here um, mm -hmm. as the redshift is starting to shred every so slowly. Um, what what are your party's thoughts on uh, what's coming next? If we have intel on where the third key location is suspected to be, I believe our plan was to head there. Okay, uh, so back back with the brigadier then. Um, so uh, we'll just say that you guys are going over your your next plan with her at this point, point. Um, and. Um, she says, uh, well, um, we have we have two of these keys uh, locked up now, and she's actually brought both of them out, and uh, she says blue uh, water attuned objects weapons uh do you know did, did you learn anything else about this organization that's responsible or was responsible for creating these not really um she was very tight-lipped about it said that she'd tell us stuff after so yeah if we were to set up uh, an obelisk or just go over there and ask more questions with these in her presence, we could definitely get more answers. I believe uh, long term that tower would be a good place for an obelisk and would uh, give us more access to uh, her knowledge and information. I can see if Dex has anything ready to go. I would like to report back to this this witch guardian uh Especially because uh, n nobody else has actually spoken to her yet besides you. Not not that I don't trust your judgment of her character, but um, before we get too hasty, uh, it might be a good idea to make sure we're doing the right thing by collecting all of these. Uh, 
as far as these dancing hills go, um, I can't say we found anything. It might also be good to ask her uh, if she has any more information on where precisely in Vesoth that is. Uh, it sounds like they weren't far from uh, Fort Silex, honestly. That could be the case, uh, but... Have our hmm. scouts over by Silex been able to reveal more of the region? Uh, do, you, do you happen to mean Ignis? Yeah, Ignis, that's the one. Yeah. Um, a, a little bit, uh, but um, they've been able to go around the lake uh, near Grandmother's Grove uh, a fair ways. Um, but I'm afraid we haven't found anything that would resemble these dancing hills so far. Um, what about further yeah. northwest from Ignis? Maybe. Um, like I said, uh, that might be a good opportunity to, to get some guidance from this, this witch guardian on where exactly these things are are meant to be located. Um, Alvis Tavri, you have your map, so I'm sure uh, she may be able to indicate something to you. Of course, yeah. I, uh, I keep this updated very thoroughly, so. Now, my other worry is that uh, that crater um, our scouts had mentioned. I don't like the idea of this giant walking around anywhere near our two front forts. None of us do, I, I, I would hope. Right. Uh, doesn't seem like we just have the tools to get rid of them, though. No, you're quite correct about that. Um, well, uh, if Dex has the resources available already, uh, I could ask him to accompany you up to that Witch Guardian's tower and begin construction on an obelisk. Uh, he might like to have a chat with her, too. Um, if, that would be fascinating. If your team is up for that. Yeah, that would Absolutely. be... That would certainly be something we could do. In the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll continue talking to the um, team at Keep Ignis, and we'll keep scouting in that direction. Uh, you, you should send uh, my man Sharp uh, as far in that direction as you possibly can. <laughs> he's like, he's ready, willing, and capable of uh, anything on the front of the most far scouting uh, thing that you have. He, he told me personally. Not you're, saying he's, you're saying he's good in really dangerous situations. Yeah, exactly. Amber Green, you were there listening to that conversation. Oh. Uh, uh, can you roll a deception check, Alba Stouter? <laughs> I am not lying. He said that we said putting him up on the front lines. I am bending my will within the truth. How is this deceptive? Uh, You're trying to sell her on it. Because you have extremely ulterior motives, and I'd like to see those. Okay, fair. <laughs> okay, that's not a terrible roll. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good roll. No, uh, I know. I, I, I have a proficiency in it, so I have a plus five in deception. But yeah. everybody knows I have a minus one in my charisma. <laughs> so I have a plus four in my deception. Uh, that's, still, that's still not bad. Um, she says... Um, uh, she says, uh, maybe. Uh, we, we could always use more... Um, uh, more talented folks out there, uh, even though it's not necessarily on the front. Um, I may I may go uh ask him uh and see if he's uh 
see if he's up for taking the hike over in that direction. Although it is, it is a bit of a walk, uh, but um, that man is a doer. He is good to know. Um, not really a thinker, but a doer. Well then, uh, do you want these back? And she pushes the uh, scepter and dagger toward you. If you're going to visit the witch, yeah, we should probably oh, yeah. bring these with us. No. Well, no. Well, it's she... takes up them, and then Naya says no, and then he's like, Should... and he controls himself with it. I no. guess if we're going to build the obelisk, we'd be able to show it to her that way. You mean remotely? Yeah. But we uh, we had agreed. Yeah. That we were going to leave these here under lock and key. No, that's fair. We probably should. I don't think she needs to we actually know where the third see piece them. Obtain the third piece of key. We have no Naya. need to bring the other two pieces and potentially Naya lose them. Right. Not Naya is right. Not Alvis Tavern nods. Oh, if you're that concerned about it, I understand. Um, it is dangerous out there. So if you'd rather go without for now, then that's no problem. Uh, I'll hold on to them. And um, you can simply uh, confer with her. Um, and uh, if you are able to set up an obelisk, I'd, I'd love to speak to her myself. Hmm. Alvis ever sighs as he sees the blue dagger going away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in that case, I'll, um, I'll note down that your group is heading up north. Um, and uh, we'll continue looking for these dancing hills uh, over to the west. but. Um, I think in the interest of keeping us all safe, I'm also going to be uh, sending another scouting squad up uh, to that area um, with that crater again. I, like I, I like said, them to well, carefully investigate and see what they can find. Sharp, that's your man. You definitely want to send him there. Maybe even a bit farther. Yeah, would right, you like him to, to visit that. the crater, or would you like him to... Are you recommending he visit the Dancing Hills over to the west? Which other is farthest and uh, closest to the Giants? He said that he wanted to deal with the situation head-on, but also... I see. I misunderstood last time. I get you complete now. Not the stabber. Do you? He, he, he seems genuinely uh, quizzical. Not worried, but quizzical. We'll call Surprise. it mostly. Yeah, exactly. Like, really? You know, you know where I'm coming from? We'll, we'll call it mostly. He seems kind of relieved, hoping that it is actually, you know, the fact that he really doesn't like him and, you know, just wants him gone. Um... He's All taking right, that's well. uh, <laughs> Best of luck out there. Be careful. Aren't we going with Dex? It's been a while since I've seen Dex. Uh, we'll stay in touch as best we can. Indeed. Yeah, he should be able to accompany you. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go fetch him, and uh, we'll, we'll get a... Uh, I suppose we'll need to get you a, a carriage organized with those lizards uh, for this one. I had some questions for Dex too. Could could you, uh, uh, well, upon sending for him, could you also ask him to maybe bring a book or two for me, specifically about uh, uh, the the idea of patronage, otherworldly patronage? Um, you could just come with me. You're, oh, Alvis Taver is so happy, and then he, you know, he skips along to her side. All right, then. Uh, I think uh, it's 1 a.m., so that might be a good spot for us to cut it tonight. Right, um, right. You guys are okay with that. So we have a plan right. for next time. Uh, whoever's here will be able to join in on that. Um, I like expedition. Uh, or yeah. Position, sorry. No, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, we got a lot done today and a lot of information. Uh, so I'm glad we were able to do that with uh, almost everybody. Yeah. Uh, so next week... Uh, we'll play at um, one hour earlier than we did today. Alvis Taver, that means you'll arrive here two hours earlier than you did today. Yeah, well, <laughs> seven o'clock Denver time. Yeah, seven o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'll thank see you, you then.
Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks for being the Dungeon Master. Bye, everyone. See you. Yeah.